This video is about space travel. Traditional rockets are currently the only way that we can reach space. A rocket is mostly fuel with the cargo or crew being at the very top. They go through a staging process while launching in order to shed weight. Most, all, all rockets that leave the earth and enter space are chemical rockets which ignite liquid fuel and then force the flames or the exhaust out the back. The idea of using rockets for space travel is surprisingly old. The first idea, the first mention of using rockets to leave the Earth's atmosphere was in 1861. It was an essay called A Journey Through Space written by William Leitch. Now the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, was actually launched by a modified nuclear missile called the R-7, built in the Soviet Union. This rocket was um, originally made to deliver weapons, but it was, it was able to be modified into a form that could deliver a satellite. Now, space generally is considered to be about 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This point is called the Kármán line, and in 1944, a German V-2 rocket during World War II reached 189 kilometers, meaning this rocket actually reached space. It may have been the very first rocket to reach this point. The V-2 rockets made by Germany in World War II were the first true guided missiles which were used to attack, mainly used to attack Great Britain. Now spacecraft need power sources, and they have some different ways of getting this. Spacecraft and space probes and satellites will carry solar panels to generate power either for, either for operating the equipment, like the various sensors and communication, or for sometimes if the rocket is using a form of electric propulsion which will be discussed soon. Uh, the solar power, the solar panels can actually generate power to help propel the spacecraft. Now, most rockets, including the ones that leave Earth to deliver things and people into space, use uh, liquid fuel that they carry themselves. Now, this fuel right now is mainly oxygen, hydrogen, or kerosene. Kerosene is an older fuel, but it is still used because it, it is a good fuel to use, it is effective, and it is also somewhat cheap since it can be uh, refined. It's a very old fuel that has existed for a long time. Now, there are different ways in which a spacecraft can move. Electric propulsion is a type of propulsion that drives a, a spacecraft and this this propulsion uses electricity to force it force out a, a gas faster than a chemical liquid rocket can do this as a result if the rock if this is being done in space electric prop a propulsion can actually achieve the same result using less fuel. However, the thrust itself is not as strong, meaning that the amount of time it could take to reach high speeds are quite long. Many of these space, uh, space probes that use electric prop propulsion take months to get to very high speeds. And this is because of the limited power. As a result of this, this cannot be used to launch a rocket from Earth. It cannot be used to leave the Earth because Earth's gravity is too strong. Right now, we can only still use chemical rockets. Oftentimes, or effectively all the time, spacecraft in space will thrust for some time. They will move, they will fire their thrusters for some time, and then they will stop stop using their uh, 
fuel. This is because since there is no air in space, they can keep gliding or continue moving until they get close enough to their destination that they can start firing their thrusters in the op opposite direction which allows them to slow down. Now there are different types of spacecraft engines. I discussed the chemical engines before which are not as efficient but they are very powerful especially useful for leaving earth. Now the, one, the engines that we have right now are not the most efficient. Uh, the chemical engines right now are not the most efficient kind. There are more efficient versions of them but they are not being used yet. An ion thruster or an ion drive is a type of electric propulsion engine which creates a gas of positively charged particles by removing their electrons and for forcing them out. Now this is where the word ion comes in. An ion is an atom or a molecule with an electrical charge that is not balanced out. So an electrical charge that is either positive or negative. This is generally referred to as a net electrical charge. Now when, when these ions are forced out, they are uh, converted back into their neutral atoms right before leaving by, a, by an injector that gives them back their electrons. This is done so that after they leave, the uh, atoms can, conti can continue to propel the spacecraft without in, uh, interfering with the way it moves. Now, the ion thruster uses only positively charged particles, but there is another type of electric propulsion called a plasma propulsion engine that forces out both positive and negatively charged ions. Now, one proposed type of engine for the future is called a nuclear fusion engine. Nuclear fusion engines are arguably the ones with the most promise, and also they will be the most powerful ones. Now, nuclear fusion technology already exists. However, it, it cannot be, unlike nuclear fission, which is currently used to generate nuclear power in nuclear power plants, nuclear fusion is extremely difficult to contain, which is why we cannot yet use it to generate power. These engines, when we do build them, will be the most powerful engines we have ever built. The type of spacecraft that they could power are, are far larger than anything else that we have right now. They, you, if, you ever if you have ever watched anything from science fiction, you can get a good idea of how large these spacecraft powered by nuclear fusion can be. Now, the only problem with this is we may or may not be able to launch them from Earth it's still unknown if we can do that simply because these engines are so powerful that the amount of uh, the amount of heat and flames they would put out would severely damage they could or could severely damage the surrounding area so if they do that and we do not pr uh, create a effective way to prevent that damage from happening then we may not be able to launch these rockets from earth simply because of how much fire they put out. However, they will be very useful in space because we could build spacecraft that are much larger and faster. This would allow us to carry more people and cargo farther out for shorter times. In fact, nuclear fusion engines have been one of the proposed type types of uh, rocket travel being used uh, that can be used for inter, uh, interstellar travel moving from our solar system to another solar system now there are actually a few other types of engines for example there is a type of these are not really properly engines but more uh, ways of simply moving through space they're not engines in the sense that the power is not being produced inside the spacecraft the, one of these is called the solar sail. The solar sail cannot be used for spacecraft in the way we know. As of now, the only plan to use these is for 
extremely small space probes space probes that are smaller than our uh, our hands and that's because these solar sails work the same way that sails on earth on ships on earth do if you have if you've ever seen a very old ship or even a modern sh or even a modern boat with a sail on it these boats and ships use the power of the wind to uh, to effectively make them move now this is very effective because they they're not carrying their own fuel because of this they can simply rely on the wind itself to provide the power they need to move a solar sail does the same thing but with light from a star or light that we can give them as well there is a new there is a program being planned right now called Operation Breakthrough Starshot which plans to send a collection of these extremely small probes with solar sails to the nearest star Alpha Centauri which actually has a planet similar to Earth on it the the plan is that these probes will go to that world take photos and send them back to us so that we can get an idea of what that planet is like these probes will not be accelerated purely by the sun, but they will instead be accelerated mostly by lasers on that are based on Earth. There is another one called the, or the, uh, the Orion Project. This project is probably the most crude way of moving through space, and it, it is actually uh, one that we can create right now, although it would be very difficult. It is simply to use large nuclear weapons to and detonate them behind a spacecraft with a uh, with a way to uh, effectively contain them inside of it, and this would force that spacecraft to move at extremely high speeds. The force of those explosions would push the spacecraft away and would get it up to speeds far higher than any other engine can achieve. The only engine that would be able to rival this, the only engine that we can uh, produce soon that would be able to rival this would be nuclear fusion engines. And other than that, the Orion project uh, is completely separate in its ability to uh, bring mainly probes and possibly people to distant areas quickly. The problem with Project Orion is actually not that we cannot make it, but that there are actually laws against using nuclear weapons in space, which is fair because there are very big risks that are involved in this. And, event and once we have nuclear fusion energy, Project Orion may not actually be a very good way for space travel. Now nuclear fusion engines are actually being constructed right now. There is a, there is a large project called ITER, I-T-E-R, that is making a nuclear fusion power plant. Now this plant will not be used for space travel, it will be used to generate electricity. But this, uh, a similar type of engine, a similar type of power source is being made by the Lockheed Martin Corporation. This engine is called the Compact Nuclear Fusion Engine and it's far smaller than a power plant and one of the purposes of this engine is to be able to power large spacecraft. Once these engines are feasible for us to build, then most then many other forms of proposed space travel could actually become useless. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned uh, one or two things about spacecraft engines and I'll see you for a more detailed video on this soon.